Hi and welcome here to the introduction of the Dragonfly 40. I'm Jens Corning, the owner of uh, Corning Boats. Uh, this is the yard uh, where we built and designed uh, the range of Dragonfly trimarans here in Denmark, where my father started back in 1967. Today we will take you through the, the uh, Dragonfly 40. So uh, my son Peter here will uh, show you all the details. The Dragonfly 40 is uh, is a boat designed for normal sailing, of course, but also for blue water sailing, offshore sailing for sure. Uh, you can sail it single-handed with family and friends, and the boat is, is easy to operate and handle all the halyards. People will show that or everything come, goes back to the cockpit with electric winches. The boat has great performance and a variety of performance. You can sail safe and uh, normally, but you, the boat also has a high uh, speed potential. You can easily outsail 60, 60 feet plus yachts uh, and even bigger. And by normal sailing, you are sailing the wind speed also in light air uh, conditions. Uh, in stronger winds, you go upwind like 10, 11, 12 knots. Upwind 40 degrees to the true wind, tacking angle 80 degrees. If you bear off in stronger winds, you are easily talking about 20 knots plus. At 15 knots wind with the Coast Hero, you do 15, 16 knots. Amazing for this kind of cruising boat. So uh, if you really look for, for performance, the boat can do it, but still always under control and lots of fun. So I will leave it up to Peter to, uh, to show you all the details of this uh, magnificent boat. We have done our utmost to make a, a great product. And uh, this is our DNA with love of sailing and uh, attention to details. And, uh, Peter will have a hard job to show you everything, but he will do his best. So, have fun. So, hi, I'm uh, Peter Kroning, and uh, I am the son of uh, Jens Kroning that just did the, the introduction here to the Dragonfly 40. So, I just here at the, at the beginning want to, to tell you a little bit about the general uh, features uh, about the boat. The boat you see here is, uh, is of course, 40 feet. Uh, you can get the boat in, uh, in two versions. So the, uh, the standard version or the touring version is made with a, with a lower rig and then we make an ultimate version with a, with a higher rig. Both rigs are in carbon. So the only difference between the two versions is only the rigging. There's no difference uh, in between uh, in, the, in the holes at all. The Dragonfly 40 comes in a standard white Jelco finish. As you can see, the boat here is painted in a metallic car paint. And of course, you can get the boat in the color that you want. As the boat is here right now, it is folded out here on the port side. When the boat is unfolded, it is 8.2 meters wide. When the boat is in this unfolded position, the boat is 12 meters long or 40 feet. But when you fold in the boat, it gets longer because you fold the outriggers parallelly into the boat and aft the boat, so it's 14 meters long. But then you get a boat that is four meters wide. The boat you see here has a copper coat anti-fouling, but the boat comes standard with a normal anti-fouling on that you can get in various colors. The Dragonfly 40 has been on the market since January 2020, where it was introduced at the boat Düsseldorf. And the boat you see here is hull number five, but we have actually managed to sell 11 boats at this point. As my father Jens introduced the boat as a blue ocean boat, it also means that this boat is categorized as a CE category A boat, which means that you can go offshore with the boat easily. As the other boats in the Dragonfly range, the Dragonfly 40 is unsinkable due to its sandwich construction. The weight of the Dragonfly 40 is around six ton, depending on how much equipment you want in the boat. For 2022, we are actually working for a project here on the Dragonfly 40 to reduce the weight of this series. That means that we will in 2022 introduce you to a carbon version of this amazing Dragonfly 40 for those who want even higher performance. And now we come to the fun part of this video. I will now take you through the boat and show you every little detail and features that comes with this amazing Dragonfly 40. Here on the pulpit of the Dragonfly 40, we have actually developed a new system that it integrated into the pulpit. As you can see here, I'm removing a bolt and then I can pull out and extend the pulpit so I have easier access to the boat. Here on the foredeck, 
you will also find the stainless steel mooring cleats. As you probably have noticed, here on the Dragonfly 40 we have a fixed bowsprit. It's a new feature here on the Dragonfly in general for all the, for all the different models. The fixed bowsprit gives a lot of possibilities for, for hiding away this uh, anchoring fitting and also a bow ladder, lanterns and so on. And I will now show you how each part works. As you can see here, we have a very nice ultramarine anchor and you can control this anchor from the anchor locker here on the bow of the boat. And it is of course uh, equipped with an electric winch. As you can see here, underneath the fixed bowsprit, we have this bow ladder for easy access. The bow ladder here, you can control from the anchor locker with an integrated line, so you can hoist the ladder. Here in the fixed bowsprit, we also have a tag line coming here out of the nose of the bowsprit to control the, uh, the asymmetric genica for the boat. This tag line is controlled directly from the cockpit. We have an option for electrical furlers, both for the Code Zero, as you see here, which actually has a remote control. It's very nice and very easy to handle. And then we of course also have this electrical furler for the Genoa, which you can control from the cockpit. Here at the bow of the Dragonfly 40, we have this anchor locker where you can control the anchoring system. You have easy access to the anchor locker here from above and underneath here you find the remote control for the anchor winch so you can so you can lower the anchor put the anchor in the water and you can of course hoist the anchor also a very simple system and uh, easy to use as earlier I explained we also have this optional electrical furling system here where you also attach the force tail. So this allows you to furl the Genoa directly from the cockpit electrically. On the Dragonfly 40, we offer a retractable thruster. As you can see, it's a retractable and it gives you a great maneuverability in the harbor when you are maneuvering the boat. And when you want to retract or fold out the thruster, you can do it directly from the cockpit. Here on the freeboard, in the bow of the Dragonfly 40, we have this integrated port light. It gives a more spacious feeling when you are inside the front cabin. As you can see here too, we also have this shine and this shape of the main hull. And it actually has three functions. The first function is to take all the spray away from the boat so you don't have too much spray on the boat. That means that we will have a lot more dry boat to sail in. Secondly, the chine also gives you more space in the front cabin. It also gives us the opportunity to keep a very narrow main hull in the waterline. That means we have less wet surface so we can keep a higher performance. And as an option, we also offer this port light here underneath the trampoline in both sides. So you can ventilate the main cabin, but also to bring some more light into the boat. Here on top of the wing in the front on both sides, you'll find these lifting eyes. You can lift the boat with a sensor lift with four straps where you place one strap here on each side and then at the aft. As you can see down here, we have a mark there's also a mark on the other side, and there's one mark in each side uh, at the aft of the boat. These marks indicate where to lift the boat with a travel lift. But please remember that you only lift under the main hull and not under the floats when using a travel lift. Here I'm standing underneath the trampoline of the boat and it's right next to the front wing here. I just want to show you this uh, stainless steel fitting for the swing wing system. The fitting you see here is made out of massive stainless steel. It is a very important part of the boat and this is the part that makes it possible for the, uh, for the dragonfly here to fold in and out. 
this stainless steel fitting or this hinge is bolted directly into the glass fiber bulkhead. The lines you see here coming out of the pocket are the control lines for the whole swing wing system. Here I'm standing in front of the port front ring of the Dragonfly 40. I would now like to tell you a little bit about the water stays we have here on board the boat. We have four of these water stays and it's the same story about all four of them. The water stay here is attached to this fitting here that is also bolted and fitted directly into the glass fiber bulkhead. And on the other end of this water stay, it is actually attached directly into a thread inside in a stainless steel fitting that is laminated directly into the wing on the inside. Now I've moved here to the end of the wing to show you this barber hole. You can use the barber hole as a trim option for the uh, asymmetric Jenica 2. So imagine if you're going dead downwind, we can actually take this barber hole here, attach it to the tack and pull out the Jenica to the leeward side of the boat so you get it out of the wind shadow from the mainsail. But this middle eye here on the front of the wing, you can also use it for an anchor bridle we have made for the boat. It's optional, but it actually prevents the boat from fishtailing when you are anchoring with the boat. Now I have moved here to the bow of the outrigger, and I want to tell you a little bit about this wave piercing design and why we have chosen to do it. When we have the assembly of the bottom and the top part of the outrigger in the waterline, it means the widest point of the outriggers is in the waterline. That means that we have a lot of buoyancy quite quick, which also gives us a more stable bolt and means that we can keep a high performance. As you can see from this angle, we have actually chosen to design the Dragonfly 40 in a way so the outriggers are actually further forward than the actual main hull. And this gives us maximum diagonal stability when we are sailing downwind. Now I want to show you a little bit about the different features here on the, on the end of the wing. As you can see here, we have some, some nylon sheaves that actually make sure that the whole swing wing system runs smoothly. These nylon sheaves, we recommend you to replace these every 10 to 12 years. For those of you that have observed closely, you can see that there is a cable here. That is the wired connection here on the deck of the outrigger, and I'll come back to that later, but it's actually the, the wire connection for, uh, for the electrical system and the solar panel. As you might also have, have recognized, we have some different bolts here in the back of the wing. And that's because here on the inside, we have a laminated uh, stainless steel fitting that is inside of the wing to the, to the water stay and also for the, the swing wing point. If you need to access this fitting on the inside of the wing, you can do it through this inspection hatch. So now I want to tell you a little bit about the, the, the deck fittings here on the outrigger. As you can see down here, this boat has a, a deck solar panel. This is actually uh, uh, optional, um, but it's a very nice feature to, to charge the battery when sailing. It's very durable and you can easily walk on the solar panel without hurting the solar cells. The solar panel is connected directly into the electrical system of the boat. Here you see the optional foldable stainless steel mooring cleat. So it's easy to moor the boat when unfolded. And here, quite forward in the outrigger, you'll find the standard hatch for the Dragonfly 40. It's a very big hatch where you can put in foldable bicycles, kite boards, extra sails, whatever you want to bring on your, on your holidays. As you can see, it's very easy to access and there's plenty of storage. As all other Dragonfly models, we also offer a rub rail here on the freeboard of the Outrigger. The rub rail protects the freeboard and the paint from, uh, from scratches when mooring the boat. Here on the aft deck of the Outrigger, we have this optional hatch. It gives you the opportunity to have even more storage space here out in the Outrigger. Whether you order this optional hatch or not, the whole float here is divided into different sections. If you go with one hatch in the Outrigger, you can get this area for an additional solar panel. As you can see here, we have a stainless steel fitting. This is for the attachments of the side stay. 
I have now moved to the aft wing here on the port side of the Dragonfly 40. And I've done that to show you the different sheeting points and also the safety cable. The cable you see down here is for the swing wing system. And you attach it into the eye here on the wing. Regarding sheeting points, we have three different positions. We have one here on the far out here on the, on the wing. That's for the, for the asymmetric Jenneker. The two inner positions are for the optional code zero. Depending on whether you're reaching or going more upwind with the code zero, you sheet the, uh, the code zero in these two positions. As you maybe have noticed, we have a pulley system here on the wing, and you can actually take it off here on the, on, the, on the sheeting point, and you can hook it into the boom. And this we call a boom vane. This we use to mainly trim the mainsail when, uh, when reaching or going downwind. But it can also be used as a safety function, so you don't make any surprise jibes. I would now like to show you this, uh, this swim ladder here at the transom of the port uh, outrigger. It gives you great access to the, to the boat when you are out swimming. And as you also can see, we have these two steps to make it even easier to, to rock down here on the transom of the, of the outrigger. Here you see the adjustable part of the side stay. So this shackle here is attached to the side stay so you can tighten up the rig. And as you can see here, both the boom bang and the adjustable part of the side stay is led back to the cockpit so you can access it from there. Now I have moved uh, beneath the, the trampoline here of uh, the port side uh, of the boat and I want to show you this uh, emergency hatch. This emergency hatch is actually mandatory due to the CE uh, homologation and we therefore have to, to, to put this, uh, this hatch into the freeboard of the main hull here. But it's actually also quite nice because it gives a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, light into the aft cabin and also gives you the possibility to ventilate uh, inside of the cabin. So here I am at the transom of the Dragonfly 40 to show you the, the swing rudder. Here on board we have, uh, have a swing rudder that means that we can actually uh, pull up the rudder if you want to go into shallow waters. It is done by this uphole line you see here that it runs directly into the cockpit. And then we have a pull down line here which also is led directly into the cockpit. To keep a strong profile in the rudder at all times we have uh, made the rudder here in carbon. So it's very strong and it's also very light as you can see here which makes it even easier to pull up the, the rudder or pull it down. Here you can see the control lines for the swing rudder. The black line here is to pull it up as I showed before and the blue line is to pull it down. The pull line goes through a spring-loaded clamp cleat. That means it will pop up if it is exposed to a certain force. So if you hit a ground it will float up and you won't have made any damage to the rudder. The standard Dragonfly 40 comes with an open transom. But as you see here, this boat has the optional foldable transom, which can fold all the way back. And as you can see here, you have, have great possibility for sun bathing or things like that. But you also have an integrated seat and also an integrated gangway. But I'll get back to that later when we are entering the cockpit. Here at the transom of the Dragonfly 40 on the outrigger, we offer this extra hatch. This hatch gives you the possibility to bring a kayak, surfboards or other toys uh, that fits into the hatch. And we can of course get this hatch on both outriggers. Now I'm standing here in the cockpit and I would like to show you how we can use the integrated gangway in the foldable transom to give greater access to the dock. As you can see, it's very easy to set up the gangway here is very light due to it's made out of carbon fiber. Gives great access to the dock. Right now it's of course looking a bit weird because we don't have the dock. Uh, but when we have the dock you can of course just 
uh, let the gangway rest on, on the dock. Otherwise, if it can't reach the dock, you can take a halyard from the mast and you can attach it to the very end here on the gangway. As you can see, it's very easy to handle this foldable transom with the, with the pulley stiff system we have, uh, have developed. Now I would like to show you the integrated seat here in the foldable transom. Now it's set up and you actually have room for three persons to sit back here and you can nice and easy sitting here helming the boat. With a, with a great overview. Here by the control lines, we also have the board down line. As we saw on the rudder, the board down line here also have the spring-loaded clamp cleat. This means that, that the center board also will kick up if it is exposed to a certain force. And then it will actually float up into the center board case. On the other side, you'll find the board up line. The board upline secures that the board will stay in the case if needed. I would now like to show you the engine room here on the Dragonfly 40. It is here in the back of the cockpit. And as you can see here, we have an easy access into the engine room. We here have a, a Yanmar engine. It is a 40 horsepower, and that is the standard inboard engine you get on the Dragonfly 40. Then you can also choose between a 57 horsepower engine. As you can see, the engine here is hidden away in the back of the boat, and that keeps the noise and the, and the smell from the engine away from the living area on board this Dragonfly 40. We have also chosen to have the engine here in the back to, to get the, the sail drive of the boat even higher from the, the very bottom of the boat. This means that we can actually allow the boat to dry out even with a sail drive. That we have the engine here in the back of the boat also means we have the propeller quite close to the uh, rudder blade. That means that when you are powering the boat up inside the harbor and you want to do a maneuver, it's very direct because you get the flow from the propeller very quick on the rudder. As you see here in the engine room, we have the cable connection between the two wheels. That means you have a very direct control and very smooth, and you can helm the, the, the boat with only two fingers on the wheel. Here inside of the engine room, you'll find the diesel heater. You'll find the warm water boiler. You can find the autopilot in the back. And here you also find the sea water filter with a clear lid and also a bilge pump. The engine room is very well insulated and as you can see here, we have done what we can to, to keep the noise level down from the living area. Here underneath the boat, you'll see the sail drive for this Dragonfly 40. The sail drive comes standard with this uh, Gori propeller that, you actually, that actually has two gears. So when you are in forward gear, it is in one position and when you are in re reverse, it changes so it is more efficient in the water. As you maybe have noticed during the video so far, the deck of the boat has anti-skid. The anti-skid is painted directly into the mold, so the boat is actually born with the anti-skid. When we have done it this way, it actually means that you will experience that it will stay in the same structure and the same color even after years of wear and tear. As a very nice feature here on the Dragonfly 40, we have this long skylight. It brings in a lot of light into the main cabin and it's great when you are inside of the boat and you can look out and you can look up at, at the sails while, you, while you're sailing. So it's a really nice fe feature and it gives you a lot of possibility for ventilate the whole boat. The skylight here consists of, uh, of four individual uh, openable skylights. Three here in the main cabin and then there's one for the forward cabin. 
And now I would also like to, to tell you a little bit about the mast base here and in general about the controls here around the mast base. As you can see here, the mast base is made so you actually have the mast standing on the deck. To support the mast in the main cabin, we have a mast support. You'll see that later on. Another cool feature is that, as you can see here, all lines are led back directly into the cockpit and is actually hidden away here underneath the deck. That means we have a very nice flush deck and the only lines you can actually see is the lines here for the general track. The lines you see come through the mast base are the control lines for the, the swing center board we have here on the Dragonfly 40. These lines are also led back to the cockpit with all the other lines. And here in front of the mast base, you see the track for the self-tacking jib. To tell a little bit about the sails, the Touring version comes standard with this self-tacking jib. The Ultimate version comes with a genera that has an overlap on the mainsail. And as you can see, you can actually adjust the, the track here for the genera if you want to reef with the genera, so you have the right sheeting point. And as you can see here, we have these nice stainless steel handrails to support you when you're walking around on the deck. After the pulpit here, you see the inlet for the freshwater tank. Now I would like to tell you a little bit about the trampolines here. As you can see, it's a big area where you have a lot of space for working with the extra sails. You have space for relaxing, sunbathing, uh, actually just have a good time. And the trampoline makes it easy to rock around the boat without uh, being sca scared about falling into the water. And due to the fact that the boat is very stable while sailing and almost sailing flat most of the time, you can actually use the trampolines here while you're sailing. The trampolines here are made out of very strong material, so you'll actually only have to replace them approximately every 12 to 15 years. If you have the boat in sunny parts of the world, you'll, you will experience that you may have to restitch the trampolines every five to seven years. I would now like to show you how to operate the swing wing system. First, I have to take off the safety cable. Next, I have to pull in the fold outline because then we take some of the pressure from the clutches. And as you can see, I open all three clutches. So both for the fold out line, fold in, and for the adjustable part of the side state. Now I can release the trampoline and the system and take the fold in line on the winches. As you can see here, there comes a mark that indicates the boat is folded in. When that is done, you close the clutches, take off the swing wing lines, and that's it. Now I would like to show you how to operate the swing wing system to fold out the boat. So you put on the fold out line on the winches. Open the clutches. And then you just start pulling out.
And now you can see here that we have a mark here on the fold outline and that indicates that the boat is now folded out. Then I close the clutches. Go out on the trampoline, put on the safety cable. Take the line off the winch. And that's it. As you can see, the boat is now unfolded and the trampoline is tightened using only one line. The swing wing system is operated within a few minutes using no tools. Now I have stepped into this fantastic cockpit of the Dragonfly 40. As you maybe already have recognized, you only see lines right here where the workstation are. So that means all lines are hidden away, which means that your crew actually can sit, have a good time without being in the way for you to, to work or, or trim the sails. This workstation is fantastic because you have these four uh, electrical winches. These four electrical winches are actually standard for the Dragonfly 40 and gives you the great ability to work with all the lines uh, while you're helming the boat. You can control the electrical winches while you're sitting here on your seat where we have the control buttons for both winches. But of course you can also use them when you're standing here. I would now like to take you through all the tiny little details here around uh, inside of the cockpit so you can have a closer look on, uh, on, on each uh, feature. As you can see here, you have a very nice station here when you are helming the boat where you can control all kinds of different things. You can control uh, all the instruments from, from this area where you have a nice plotter, two displays to, to overwatch the boat. You have the, uh, the engine controls here where you also have the, uh, the, the gas handle here to, to control the, the engine. And you also have the control panel here for the, for the bow thruster. So all in all, you can handle almost everything from here. Uh, main sheet, genoa, whatever you feel for. And as you can see, you also have kind of the same, same uh, setup on the other side of the boat. So whether you're sitting on the port or the starboard side, you, you have the same control, uh, control opportunities over the boat. And as you also can see here, we have the, the electrical furler for, for the Genoa. And here on the other side, in the same position, we have it for the Coach Zero furler. I'm now here to tell you a little a bit about this workstation we have here. It's more or less the same setup on the other side. So all the lines that comes here is coming directly from the mast. So that's kind of so that's uh, halyards. It is a uh, general sheet, and it's also the uh, the board up and down. The clutch you see out here is to control the folding system. So it's fold in and fold out, and then also the adjustable part of the side stay. Right here. We have another set of clutches that's uh, for the for the mainsail sheet and also for the boomerang that I told you about earlier. And this little fella you see here is a block that leads the genera sheet to the winch over here. All the lines you see here that are led back to the cockpit here, you can use on the electrical winches. That's a very nice detail. We have an extra winch here. It's uh, optional for the for the optional uh, barber hole system which you can use for, for both the, the Corsero and the Genoa. This setup means that we can lead all the lines away from the, from the living area and your crew when you're sailing. And we have here in the cockpit combing a lot of storage for all the halyards and lines. As I told before, you can control everything on the winches here from behind the wheel. But as a crew, you can also be, be a part of the trimming, trimming options because we have placed buttons here for the electrical winches. This electrical winch setup actually makes it possible to sail the boat easily single-handed and short crewed. For storage, your fenders and, and mooring lines, we have actually made a little storage room here. So here you can see we have fenders, mooring lines, but it also has another function. 
As you can see here, we have made this support system. So you actually have the opportunity to have a better angle here while sailing, so you are more comfortable when you're standing and helming the boat, when the boat is healing a bit. As I told before, you can see you can sit nice and comfortably here in the front end of the, of the cockpit because all the lines are hidden away and you can just sit and have a good time with, with the rest of the crew here in the cockpit. Here we also have this nice backrest foaming to make it even more comfortable to sit here and relax. Underneath the combing here we have put in LED lights and also here in the bottom of the cockpit to give it a cozy atmosphere when you're sitting here having a great time with your family and friends. Underneath the cockpit combing here, you'll find the loudspeakers for the audio system. For extra storage, we have made a locker here underneath the cockpit seat. Integrated in the cockpit combing, we have a propane locker. You use the propane for the stove inside of the boat. There are many options for the navigation instruments here on board the Dragonfly 40. So here we have two multi-displays and one GPS. This setup gives the crew the opportunity to have the same information as the skipper. The skylights here on the top gives the opportunity to bring in more light and ventilate the cabin even more. I would now like to show you how you close the companionway. All parts are integrated here close by. As you can see, the parts here are tinted but still transparent, so you can bring some more light into the boat. To optimize the ventilation while the boat is still enclosed, we have developed this, this mosquito net. The frame of the mosquito net is made out of carbon fiber and is a sleek feature to still bring some more air into the boat even though the companionway is closed. The manual bilge pump is placed here. The cockpit table here in the center of the cockpit is able to stay in position while you're sailing and you can fold it up for having even more space when you are having something to eat or whatever you feel for. The cockpit table can of course be removed, so I would now like to show you how it's done. So as you can see, it's easy to remove and you have even more space here inside of the cockpit. The cockpit table comes with a carry bag, so you are able to store the cockpit table inside of the outrigger. When sailing offshore, we have a security option here with, uh, with four pad eyes, two here and two underneath the seats of the, of the helming position to, to attach your, your lifeline. Here you see two covers. This is for the inlet for the diesel tank and this is for the fitting for the uh, emergency tiller. Right here on the side of the cockpit combing and in front of the port uh, wheel, we have the cockpit shower. The main sheet system is integrated here in the cockpit floor. And as you can see, the lines for the main sheet are led underneath the cockpit floor and directly to the electrical winches. I would now like to show you how to set up the spray hood. So as you can see, the spray hood here is very easy to set up and you've done it within a few, few minutes. The Dragon 540 is a fast boat, therefore it's nice to have this area where you are sheltered from the wind and spray. If you're sailing in warm conditions, we have made it possible to open the middle section to get some ventilation through the spray hood. In connection with the spray hood, it is possible to have a cockpit tent that encloses the whole cockpit. For both the bimini, the cockpit tent and the spray hood, you can get the fabric in various colors. 
That was all I had to show you here in the cockpit. Now I would like to take you inside of the boat. Follow me. Now I am in the main cabin of the Dragonfly 40. It's quite spacious and you can easily sit around the table here six persons and having a good time. Behind me here and on the other side you see we have two cabinets. And we have also cabinets or extra storage all around here in the main cabin. As I showed from the outside, you can now here see the two port lights in the freeboard that brings in some lights and gives you the possibility to ventilate the main cabin. Here in the middle, you see the mass support. Here underneath the table, you have the centerboard trunk. It's totally sealed and you have all the control lines in the cockpit as showed earlier. Here you see the main cabin in night mode and you're also able to dim the ambient lights. Here on the port side of the main cabin, we can make the sofa here to a double berth. As you can see, the seat transforms to a berth quite easily. For all the side windows here in the main cabin, we have curtains for privacy. As shown previously, we have three skylights here in the main cabin. It gives you a great ability to ventilate the whole cabin and brings in a lot of light. And if you want some more privacy, you can of course close all three of them. And to ventilate, it's also possible with a mosquito net. The main cabin offers a big table here in the center. It can fold up and down so you can have great access here through the main cabin. And as you can see down here, we actually have a foldable footrest to give you even greater comfort when sitting here and having a good time. Here I am in the front cabin of the Dragonfly 40. As you can see, it's quite a big cabin where, the, where we have a two meter long berth that can fit two adults. As shown from the outside, we have plenty of light coming in here from the skylight and the two port lights in the freeboard. For both skylights, we have roll-up lines and also here for the port lights. As you can see, we have plenty of LED lights here inside the front cabin to make a cozy atmosphere. And to make it even more cozy, we have, we have dimmable lights Here in the front cabin, we also have quite some storage here in the front and on the sides. And here, right next to me, on both sides, we have bigger cabinets for storage. Underneath the bed, you'll find even more storage. For privacy, you can easily close the sliding doors here for the front cabin. I would now like to introduce you to our navigation corner. Here underneath we have the chart table to store your charts. And underneath the navigation table, we have additional cabinets. And in the cabinet here, you can see we have a VHF. We have a 12 volt socket for USB. And then we have the control for the heating system the controls for the audio system, and then we have a multi-display for the navigation. Right next to it, you'll find the switchboard for the electrical system in the boat, where I can switch on and off the different electrical components. Over here on my far left, we have an overview that shows the level of the water, fuel and grey water, and also the batteries. Underneath the whole floor here in the main cabin, you'll find a lot of additional storage. And in each panel here, we have kept them very lightweighted with a foam core. And underneath the sofa, or the seats, in both sides of the boat, we have extra storage. Here I'm standing in the kitchen area of the Dragonfly 40. 
As you can see, I have plenty of headroom, even though I am one meter and 92 centimeters. Here in the kitchen area, we have this propane stove. We have two taps, one for fresh water and one for salt water. And we have a propane oven. And here you have plenty of storage for all your kitchen gear. And underneath the worktop here, we have drawers for cutlery. Underneath the propane stove here, we have a compressor fridge. Here I'm standing in the heads of the Dragonfly 40. In the sides here, we have the side window and we have the skylight here in the top to bring in some light and also to give you the possibility to ventilate. In the corner behind me, we have the shower. And right here behind me, we have the toilet that has the optional electrical flush. Underneath the window and here in the side, we have space and storage for all your toiletries. Here I am in the entrance of the aft cabin in the Dragonfly 40. As you can see, I'm sitting here on a great seat with nice comfort. Here in the entrance, we have different storage options. We have a cabinet here right behind me. And then you also have some storage here on the side. Right next to me here, you can see the previously explained mandatory escape hatch, where you also have a roller blind for privacy. And here above it, we have a side window also with curtains. All the way in the top here, we also have a hatch to bring in some more lights and also to give you the ability to ventilate the aft cabin. And as you can see, we also have a mosquito net and a roller blind here for privacy. I've now jumped in the aft cabin here to show you how spacious it actually is. It is two meters long and you can easily be two persons in here. For storage, we have different cabinets here inside of the aft cabin. We have one up here, or actually two. And we have one right here. And again, here in the aft cabin, we also have a lot of LED lights as in the other cabins, which are also dimmable. Thank you, Peter, for showing us uh, the Dragonfly 40. The pleasure is mine. Yeah. I hope you all uh, enjoyed uh, the show here. Uh, as you see, we've been very busy here at the yard. Very many details and we spent quite some time to, to develop this very beautiful piece of kit. This is not just a boat, this is actually the boat of my dreams. I've spent all my life in sailing and this is all the best we can do at the yard with the input from all our clients we have so far and my own knowledge for more than 40 years here at the yard. So to be able to sail this boat single-handed, easy to sail with all the electric winches, Peter have told you all the features. It's so fantastic cruising and sailing and fast sailing in one boat. It's, uh, it's the best. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us here at the yard or our dealer network. Thank you for watching.